I had to move out of the house I was living in, and it was a friend who just said, why don't you build something? And um, that sounded like a great idea. I think I'm slightly claustrophobic. <laughs> so the storage container was a little daunting. But um, I got the container for free. It was a ship? It was online? Yeah, it was a shipping container that brought things back and forth from China. Right? So it had been at sea. It was free, you know? I mean, basically, I moved in there with like $4,000. I mean, basically, it was like the two by fours, insulation, the drywall, the little bit of plumbing that I did on it, like the sink. And I was in that house after a month. This is it. <laughs> There's not much more. This is, this is right now kitchen and living room. And uh, this is my daughter's trapeze, so it's her playroom. I had no idea about building stuff. I had remodeled a boat once, and that was my experience in construction, which was not much. With a jigsaw, I cut the openings, which took like a bunch of blades per opening. We did the door and the window and then these doors. The benefits of a container, you can move in right away. You have a house immediately. I mean, that's the thing. It's pretty incredible. Pretty traditional framing, two by fours. And then I put the denim insulation. And then I put bubble wrap to protect the wood because of the condensation issue. On the floor I put also insulation, but I put the styrofoam kind. And then I put a floor above it. And then I put tatamis on this part. And then with the ceiling I put the styrofoam insulation and then these very thin plywood, which I'm going to take out and then at one point put a really nice roof. It's really well insulated. I mean, if anything, it just gets too hot. I mean, when you have that many cube feet of air, it just warms up really quick. So, I mean, we were living in just that, 8 by 20, 160 square feet. I mean, there was a bed, a living room, and a kitchen, and that was it. You know, we managed to pull that off, but it was tight. So, originally, I thought I was going to go upstairs, put my room and my daughter's room up there, but um, I just decided to build this other one on a flatbed trailer. It's a flatbed trailer, and we bolted, you know, the frame to the base, and then just, you know, regular building. I mean, it's really mostly built like a shed. It's a nice looking shed, but it's really a 8 by 16 shed with windows in it. And I made it all with southern exposure. I put like as many windows as I could because I really wanted it to be warm. So I hardly heat this. I mean, I just heat it a little bit. So at nighttime, when I lay in bed, I can see um, the moonrise and the moonset, and I did it on purpose. So if you lay here, you can see just sky. So my daughter and I lay in bed, and we've had like a million astronomy sessions. So it's been pretty amazing to like just spend so much time looking outside. In any of my other houses, I never like stayed connected with the world that way and like time passing. When you don't have money, you just get creative, you know? And I had to go to, like, the junkyard and be like, okay, what am I going to do? And, like, okay, I'll pick that. And, like, how can I convert that into a closet? Or how can I make that a sink? Or how am I going to make that fit? Yeah. It's incredible what you can find in the dump here, you know? I mean, everything. Everything in here is from the dump. The floors were $25 a panel, which is, like, I needed three for the whole floor. So the floor was $75. The ladder I got for free. The dresser, which is crooked. Those were like 15. The windows were like 15. I think I paid 50 for this one. The other door over there, because the door opens, I think that one was 75. I think the window was like 30 and 40, each of those windows. And it really helps if you're not in a rush. I mean, I built in one month, but like I took two or three months to gather things. So how about all the kids go upstairs? So they can see how many kids fit up there, actually. So I think I've calculated, like, I have 360 square feet, I think, counting the loft, but I'm not sure, somewhere around there. Uptown! Uptown, yeah! This is way uptown, isn't it? It's my room. It is? Do you like your room? No, because I can't sit up or stand up or anything. I think it's fair if she doesn't like it. I mean, at times she's been like, this totally sucks and I don't want to do this, and at other times she's really proud and shows it off, and she's... She's like, I have the best house, you know? But I think if I have one more room, then she gets this whole room and that will be perfect. Then she can't complain. But you know, like one point I was stuffing all these pink toys into a box and I was like, since when, like, in order to have a ch happy childhood, you have to have boxes of a pink room with pink curtains and pink stuff in it to be a happy child, so. I mean, this was really a choice about like, you know, how many hours do we have to our life and how do I want to spend those hours? And 
really about like, do I want to go like work more than 10, 20, 30 hours in a week so that I can pay rent to have a big house so that I can be like a healthy, normal mom. So this was my choice. And like, she's definitely complained at times, but I also know that like, we have spent way more hours than I would if I had to pay rent. I mean, I grew up in Argentina and you know, the standards of living, like this would be like a really nice house in Argentina, you know? Salaries are so little. We grew up in the country. Do you want to make the tea? Yeah, you want to come have some tea? <laughs> I used to have about 10 teapots. Now I have three. And really, it's okay. Three's okay. I have hot water, I can show it to you. It's a portable camping heater. You can actually take this camping. So it has a little handle, you can like hang it from a tree. It's super simple, it's like $135. And basically, cold water goes in, you got the cold water hose. Propane goes in, mixes them up, and then the hot water comes out. It's so simple, like this is a hot water heater that provides all the hot water I need, ever. It's pretty incredible. It's on demand, so you turn it on, you can hear it go on. Oh, camping stove. I rigged it with a long hose to the propane tanks that are outside. So I have one tank for the stove and one for the heater. Melon, melon. Melon, melon. It's a little bit like a boat. So when I think about the year that I lived on my boat, I think this is really spacious and luxurious. I kept having this dream of this very square boat. <laughs> After I built it, I was like, oh, that's what this was. This was the square boat that I kept dreaming about. I want some So here's the other um, materials I have. So the next room is going to be built in this stuff. So it's going to look like a little Japanese tea room. So these are super sweet. They go about 300 bucks new. So this is the next room. And then I'm going to do the greenhouse and just corrugate it. And so right now I'm in the process of drying out and we'll build in a couple weeks a greenhouse that's going to connect these two because in winter it was very exciting to go through the rain and you know the elements and the wind and the frost um, to the bathroom. I did build the bathroom too. I wouldn't have put the toilet right there but it was the only way to fit the toilet, the bathtub, and the sink. <laughs> what size? Four by eight. There's not that many ways you can put the sink and the bathtub, a, a cloth with tub and a toilet in. <laughs> I could have gone on a smaller cloth with tub, but there's just some things I don't compromise with. My priorities, I drink high-end tea and I take a <laughs> immersion bath. <laughs> so I showed this to my brother in Argentina and Michael. A vos siempre te gustó así la pobreza con mucho estilo. Siempre como pobre elegante. Although now it's like fashionable to be kind of wabi-sabi, right? Wabi-sabi? It's uh, aesthetic, like those doors, like reclaimed furniture or, you know, a lot of antique art is with Wabi Sabi. It's about beautiful things that have time. It's sort of the concept of like, this concept of impermanence, right? Like, we are just transitioning. Living in a small space. You have a different relationship with the objects that you live with because then you really want them. It's so much stuff I don't need. Like, you know, right now I have 20 spoons. I don't really need 20 spoons, but I used to feel like I really needed 20 spoons, but. You just dropped in the toilet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get the spoon out of the toilet. No, but. So I've just been like, keep getting rid of stuff and it's just great. Material things, all of it is on borrow, right? We're all just borrowing stuff. And, I mean, we don't own things. We just get them for a little bit and then, you know, we pass them on and someone inherits it or, you know, you just give it away. None of this is ours, you know, and like we try to secure ourselves in these identities like my house, my wife, my car, my children, my career, you know, the bigger, the more assured and more I'm sure that I am myself and it's like, oh no, no, this house is just really a prison, you know, and I'm tied to the bank. I want some tea. I decided to go for a student loan, so this was my mortgage, but I wanted to do it in intellectual property instead of in physical property. So one fantasy I have is to buy a barge and like take it and put it on top of a barge and then I can like live on the water. <laughs> I can take it anywhere, which is really fabulous. I could even ship it to Argentina. <laughs>